In a previous factory tour, we talked about how Bits Power's Changhua Taiwan factory manufactures its water cooling blocks, fittings, reservoirs, and even LN2 pots. Today's tour looks at the company's R&D facility down the street, where initial development and post-manufacturing QC is handled. Most of this is done by the same four pieces of equipment, but it's worth breaking it out into a separate video. Today, we'll look at surface levelness measurements, something that we introduced into our own cooler reviews recently, alongside block keepout zone compliance planning, quality control, error, and run-to-run -run variation in unit dimensions, and the software side of development. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's RTX 2080 Ti XC Ultra. The 2080 Ti XC Ultra is what we use in our CPU reviews to avoid GPU bottlenecks. The XC Ultra uses hydraulic dynamic bearing fans for reduced noise, features RTX support for DXR titles, and uses a massive 2.75 slot cooler. The cooler design allows the fans to spin slower and quieter while sinking heat, further leveraging a mix of L-shaped and traditional fins to maximize airflow or contact. Learn more at the link in the description below. Before any of the previous tour's machining takes place, the company first has to design and prototype its products. The previous tour looked at fitting manufacturing, water block manufacturing, and acrylic component manufacturing, and you can find that tour and all of our other factory tours in the series in our factory tour playlist linked in the description below. We'll start this process with planning. Bits Power first faces a challenge that isn't related to mechanical engineering or to manufacturing, but is instead related to relations and a different type of engineering, social engineering. The company has to get its hands on any new products coming to market as far in advance as possible, and sometimes even has to wait until launch to buy new video cards or motherboards. From a business perspective, this has massive implications. Availability at launch is the difference between a successful product release for a cooling company and letting their competitor take the market, because if Bits Power doesn't get to it on day one, someone else competing with them surely will. Because of how restrictive Nvidia and AMD are with sampling, it can sometimes be difficult to get components early enough to have measurements for block manufacturing. So Bits Power has to rely on its relationships to pull through. And with something like 90% of the blocks being sold being for NVIDIA cards, and with how NVIDIA is completely crazy when it comes to sampling, it makes sense that this would be one of the most trying times for a company to try and get its new products together. Once this cloak and dagger process of talking to people is complete, and the components are either acquired in advance of launch or are purchased, Bits Power can begin the manufacturing process. For this, before making the parts, Bits Power uses a scope that's hooked up to a computer and then magnifies the component, either a motherboard or a video card, and plots coordinates and software. A technician uses physical wheels on the machine to reposition the board under the magnifying glass, then presses a button on the keyboard to place a point on the grid. At the end of the process, the points can be used in software to begin the design process for the block. These measurements are needed because the topology of new boards is often different, and keepout zones need to be established to avoid running into VRM components or other surface mount devices. There's only one of these stations set up, so each day is spent measuring new boards and providing coordinates to the 3D modelers upstairs. We asked if Bits Power had any of the laser measurement systems, and we're told that they might by next year. But for now, they're still using the semi-manual means of measuring the sizing and height requirement for all of the blocks. The neighboring depth gauge is for both development and quality control. This set of Mitotoyo equipment includes a $200,000 NTD marble slab, or about $6,600 USD. We asked a clarifying question about whether it's granite or marble, since granite's more common for this type of thing, but since we're not geologists, we had to rely on translation, and that came back as marble. Either way, it's over six grand, and its only purpose in life is to be flat perfectly flat, or very nearly so. The slab is accompanied by a depth gauge similar to our own, although much more expensive at $2,000 just for the data logger, the Midotoyo Surftest SJ210. The gauge itself uses a probe and tests the depth versus a known zero point to check the levelness of a surface. This equipment is all expensive to buy, but it's also expensive to set up and train for. It needs to be checked routinely for accuracy and recalibrated or at least recertified regularly, like most precision instruments would. Bits Power uses this to check for levelness of new product surfaces and to check for engineering accuracy, and also uses it for production units. Bits Power checks roughly 30 to 40 pieces per 1,000 units produced, acting as another QC step after the factory level functionality QC steps and preceding the packaging level visual QC step. Any QC failures are thrown into the copper or aluminum recycling bins 
and sold back to the metal supplier for a rebate on the next order. We explained that in the previous video, but just as a recap, a lot of this processing has some form of waste, and fortunately, most of it is a metal waste. So it's relatively easy to recycle since it's not contaminated in the process of manufacturing. It's just cut down with the excess removed from the stock block that's purchased from a supplier and then discarded into a bin. All these are bagged up and sold back to the supplier for a discount. And uh, again, that's at the spot price for copper, aluminum, or whatever the material may be, plus the agreements in place with the supplier. Another station in this room is for optical inspection of components against known measurements from the engineers. The microscope is hooked up to a backlight and a computer with CAD files loaded to establish known guidelines for acceptable variants in manufacturing. The equipment is used for both quality control testing and for pre-production planning, as is all the other equipment in this room, and it's only partially automated. The computer detects the outline in the product silhouette under the magnifying glass and on top of the light box, and then optically measures the dimensions of the product without much human input. In this instance, a fitting is being checked for acceptable diameters and lengths. The machine has an error of 0.005 millimeters, and the spec for acceptable manufacturing tolerance was barred from being shown on camera. But a technician cross-references the known guidance against what's shown on the screen, then passes or fails the component. Obviously, there's a lot of trade secrets at these places, so we can't always show everything, but they have guidelines that they follow, and that's all you need to know. Although hesitant at first, we were able to work with BitsPower to show some of the 3D modeling of components prior to production. After taking initial scans of components downstairs using the manual wheel scrolling and dot placement solution, the technician sends the coordinates up to the modelers upstairs who begin 3D design in SolidWorks. The company pulled up one of its designs that had already launched to show us, and the models are made to accommodate component clearances and to ensure the right areas on the PCB, like MOSFETs or other power components, are all cleared. From the time BitsPower receives the board, the company requires about 14 days to design, prototype, and test its cooler. This is one of the major benefits of doing everything in-house. If BitsPower worked with third-party shops to manufacture its blocks, it'd have to wait weeks to months on sampling stages, because they'd have to send it out to a factory, work with them on the design requirements, and then get a sample, and then probably get at least one more sample before moving forward with production. That takes a long time. Instead, the engineers can email their file to the factory down the road, which is owned by BitsPower, and then drive by and pick it up later that day. This means that the company can rapidly prototype designs, and potentially make multiple prototypes in a day, then hook them all up for thermal testing to ensure the components are properly contacted, and cooled. As we said in the previous video, it takes something like 25 minutes for a copper block to be made for a CPU. A GPU would take longer, it's a larger component, but we didn't get specifics on that since BitsPower wasn't making any at the time we visited. The acrylic pieces take somewhere around 11 minutes to make for a CPU, and so the time to actually prototype something is relatively short. It would be reasonable for BitsPower to make a couple different versions, and then hook up thermal probes and run testing as desired to make sure every part of the board is cooled as needed. We asked BitsPower why it doesn't use skiving, like closed-loop cold plate makers do, and the company told us that it's a waste of time for its product. According to BitsPower, because of the pressure created by the jet plate and the flow path for the water, the additional surface area of closer microfins enters diminishing returns and only serves to drive up the defect rate, which would increase the price for everybody, including the customer. Currently, the fins are about 0.3 millimeters apart, and although the company could make them closer with its existing processes, it has determined that it's really better to just go with something that it knows works well and doesn't cause unnecessary defects and unnecessarily long manufacturing time while still providing what it thinks is about the same benefit. If you're curious to see how cold plates are made for CLCs or AIOs, you can check one of our other tours where we looked at Deepcool and Cooler Master factories where they make the cold plates in-house for their own coolers. It's typically done with skiving, where a blade comes in and pushes up bits of the copper into the microfin and follows this process repeatedly for every one of the microfins in the block. It takes a long time to make a single unit, and so the cost is high even for a company at the scale of Cooler Master, which is one of the largest cooling companies in the industry. They even make stuff for street lights, for example. And so the time cost requirement for a company like BitsPower or other open loop cooling solution companies is significant. It's one of the highest costs outside of real estate in the industry, 
and machine time ultimately needs to be controlled. And in this case, it looks like 0.3 millimeters is about what they're going with. Finally, as discussed in the previous video, there's one last QC process in the packaging area where everything is checked by eye. So all of this R&D equipment, like the service level measurements and the fitting dimensions checker, that's used for both design and for QC after the development of the unit. The factory level, they already have a couple of checks involved where the technicians will pull units out of the tray every 20 minutes or so and make sure everything looks visually good and also check the threads and the flushness, the levelness of the fittings contacting the plates. But then after it's packaged and sent to this part of the headquarters, testing is done to look at things more precisely, like the tolerances, the dimensions of the unit, and then of course the more visual sense of things of just how does it look when it came out. So that's everything for this setup for Bits Power. You can check our previous tour for the CNC, the machining side of things. Subscribe for more to check out additional factory tours coming up soon. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly in paying for trips like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.